Live. Okay, it's recording. Give you guys a few minutes to join in. Let me know when they start joining. I see the tag friend. All right, we are live. Do we see anybody chiming in? Well, sorry we're late. Anybody there? Yeah, we're late. We stayed way too long at round two today. Um, those, well, not long enough. <laughs> if you ask us, but we knew we had to be back here. So, um, yeah, we're going to do, I'm going to do some more videos on uh, round two. And uh, that'll be tomorrow. We're tired. <laughs> so, it's been a anyway. fun day, though. It's been a fun day. Oh, man, it's been an excellent weekend. Um, if you tuned into our previous uh, videos yesterday, our live videos, we did uh, my collection, and uh, then later on we did a, a Zoom with uh, Nick Tate. That one was, both of them went over very well. So tonight we're doing the uh, 124th items that we have, and um, hopefully we're getting some of you guys lined up. I know the UK is probably in bed by now, but you can watch this in the morning. My, my, my apologies. Got, how many we got? Nine so Nine. far. Ten. Ten. Woohoo! Ten. <laughs> hey y'all. Is it showing the names? No. Uh yeah, Kyle Clark is watching. Hey Kyle, my dude. So we'll go ahead and start. We got ten people. Gary, um, Derek, Bernie. I'll be able to uh, watch this again once we're done. Uh, I will uh, put it to YouTube since I'm actually recording it this time. The first one we did for the tour at the, the Mort Museum, I forgot to hit uh, record, so that's my bad. We'll do another one because you got to do an updated uh, uh, get get the rest of the stuff out of storage and yeah. uh, finish up. So here we are, one twenty fourth day Sunday. We have two forty four inch eagles, a thirty one inch hawk, a studio scale. Ultra Pro Command Module, Laser Tank, Moon Buggy, and some odd names. All right. Let Gordon take over here because the two eagles are his and the hawk. And Finish the my and the tank. I only got one thing here today. <laughs> okay. Actually, I put your. Uh, I'm feeling left out. I put your. Uh, Oh, there's my engine section. Your, your thrusters there and your uh, maintenance thruster. Anyway, uh, what you see here is uh, basically the, uh, the Rogue Eagle from Lee Malone and Rogue Studios. Um, this was um, uh, built in 2015. It's um, an amazing, amazing, durable eagle. Uh, and I've added a couple of other things to it. but. I've been extremely, extremely happy. This was my first 44 inch. It was the, the ultimate, um, um, I guess, inspiration of, of trying to, uh, you know, get to this point uh, of collecting. And then um, I kind of expanded. Um, I didn't bring my third, uh, which really was my second 44 inch Eagle from Harold Wolf, the, the VIP that you guys have seen in the past. I just didn't have enough room in the SUV. Um, so I brought, uh, I brought the Rogue. I also brought the, the one from uh, Bim. Bim actually uh, scratched this one pretty much from, from the ground up for the most part um, with, with regards to turning an Eagle 1 into an Eagle 2. So, you know, imagine sanding each one of the shoulder pods down and, and basically putting up um, or cutting up a, a plastic card and uh, to the, to the proper or more or less proper specs of Eagle 2 uh, all the way around. He also modified the engines to the extent of uh, all of the uh, details of Eagle 2. He also added the, uh, the diamond, the diamond uh, piping for the, uh, I guess, the look for year two. Where uh, on, on the Rogue, what Lee wanted to do for the Rogue was to produce an Eagle, which I was very happy with. Uh, as, it, as if it were being delivered from space models uh, for, for the production of breakaway. So it's relatively clean. I didn't want too much uh, weathering on it. Been very happy with uh, 
with the detailing that Lee had done with it. Uh, but yeah, it's as if uh, it were delivered to to uh, Pinewood or, or Bray, I think it's Bray Studios. Bray Studios. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to where well, he would actually do the, uh, the, the shooting uh, for, for Breakaway, basically. Um, what we have here, do, do you remember the, the details of these uh, stairwells? Uh, Chris Potter made them. Did he? Okay, yeah. well, hats off to Chris Potter. Really appreciate it. I don't think I got this one from you, though, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Yeah, so um, really, really like that. Um, so a little bit about the um, the laser tank. Let's uh, let's kind of focus on the laser tank. That's a Jim Small build. Uh, he actually did uh, painstaking uh, research, and uh, it's a very nice build. Um, one of the three from the um, Infernal Machine. Uh, when Martin Bower made these, I mean, it's it's almost a shame that he didn't use them or they weren't being used in the show anymore. Well, obviously, the first three got blown up by by Gwent, but. Um, they were ultra cool, ultra awesome. Ch uh, they, they have uh, Chieftain Bottoms. This particular one is an RC. I didn't bring the RC controller or anything like that. But it's a very well made uh, uh, tank. Very happy with it. Uh, so the Hawk, the Hawk was also intended to be a Rogue release when uh, Lee Malone actually had the uh, license with Anderson Entertainment. Um, so he ended up producing two prototypes, which I ended up uh, purchasing. And Bim Pamaroyan also built uh, that. I also have an uh, you should probably see my photo of both Todd and I holding uh, both, <laughs> both Hawks at the Alpha 2017 um, convention. But I ended up with, with purchasing both of the um, prototypes. I had one done up in orange, then the, uh, the other one was done up in white. Right, so um, I, I brought the white one uh, pretty much to uh, show off. Now, for, for to get back to Bim's Eagle, I apologize for, I, I totally forgot to, to bring the uh, the thruster. So, Mike yeah. Reader, Mike Reader, I apologize, man. There'll be no <laughs> missions for you tonight. <laughs> Need another cup of coffee or something, I don't know. Anyway, I apologize, but you could actually see some really splendid, splendid detail of what uh, Bim had incorporated into this amazing, amazing build. So um, you probably might have noticed that uh, some of the feet, uh, there's like one of the feet are not in the exact proper spot on the uh, freighter build, and um, one of the feet's actually missing. So I, it, they, 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 they fell off, and I have to do a little bit of repair work. One thing when you get into this that I didn't realize until Alpha 2014, and I saw Chris Potter doing a number of... Um, repair works on his own eagle. I didn't realize how much repair work on a regular basis was going to be needed when you actually move these things around and transport them and stuff like that. Elements of these eagles, since they're not mass produced, are pretty, pretty fragile. So uh, bottom line is, is that you're, you're going to have to do some, do some uh, mod work. Uh, even the Rogue uh, had some mod work done. There was a couple of resin pieces that held the feet in place. One broke. So I asked Lee to replace those resin pieces with, with metal pieces. Uh, I think they were made out of brass or something. And uh, now they're, it's rock solid. So I will, I will never have that problem again, uh, unless I literally uh, throw it on the ground or something. But obviously something else would break before that will. Um, with regards to uh, uh, the Ultra Probe ship. I'll take that one if you want. You, you will take that one. That's uh, Todd's. Very nice, very nice build. The Ultra Pro Command Module was uh, cast by, um, here we go again, Andrew Grimshaw. Sorry, Andrew. You're my buddy, though. He casted these, uh, I think he did 30 of these, and um, I bought, uh, uh, bought mine off of him and um, sent it to Richard Ashton, who we all know was a fine builder. So it's an Ashton? It's another Ashton. Nice. So yes, he did a very good job on it. Um, and the aluminum? All aluminum, everything. It's all Mike Reader aluminum. All the way around. Amazing um, stuff. I can't wait till I can get mine. He did a really, really good job. Both Andrew and uh, Richard. So I can't complain. It's, it's really, really nice. The detail, um, the detail on that is, is 
pretty amazing too. I love the wiring on it. Yeah. And and the, yeah, the the aluminum makes it just absolutely <clears throat> pop. So Mr. Ashton, you did a fantastic job detailing it. Andrew, you did a fantastic job. Uh, and I now own the masters and molds to that. So one of these days I'm going to get around to producing it. If anybody's interested, leave me a note. Yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, finding out if there's uh, going to be any interest. Wouldn't mind producing a few. Yeah, you? if we get enough interest, we'll we'll, we'll do a, a a round of them, depending on uh, interest. Um, the other little items we have here is this is the service truck. This was uh, in only in photos, I believe, of breakaway. Well, I, it was I in think the hangar pre-production pre photos. Yeah, pre-production photos, but you know how us serious 1999ers are. They decided they wanted to do um, a bottle of it, and it's from uh, Bix Kits or Uncle Bill, Bill Orem. All his kits are, are fantastic. He comes with lights. You can see I put we, my, uh, Tim Nolan built this for me. He put the uh, battery in the bottom, made them all flashing. If you look real close, you can see keys on the on the seat. Just barely. Pretty cool little kit. <laughs> um, these are out of out of uh, production too, so don't know if they'll be coming back in. He also did this engine uh, hoist carrying job, and uh, this is a metal aluminum uh, thruster. And you know, it's got the light up here. I mean, this is basically what you would think it would look like sitting in the hangar, being ready to be added to another eagle. This one also was out of production, I believe. Hmm. And, um, another Bix, 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 yep. another Bix, Bix, Bix Kits. Another Uncle Bill, Bix Kits. Uh, <clears throat> Moon Buggy. This is the 124 scale. The real 124. The real 124. Yeah. So, not, not the ultra big one. Yeah, this is these. I, I believe he he still has these around. You know, if you ask him for them. So neat little kits there. And then his uh, these Alpha uh, astronauts, the Alpha guys. He built these for me and painted them up. Gave me some nice little cool stands for them. I mean, look at the detail on this bad boy. He's got a stun gun and a com lock. The, the air packs. They are canon, yes, as far as I'm concerned. So all these little things kind of add to the uh, the fun. Oh yeah. Let's talk about Richard Lamer's uh, booster. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'm, you go because you've got more details on this than I do. I just that's just I'm just the one that got it. Well, Richard Lamer built this. Um, this is Mike Reader, um, Mike Reader Aluminum. Um, we are sooner or later going to get an Eagle Four. Uh, the, the lab pod eagle and we're going to display it one of these days properly as if it were a metamorph eagle <laughs> yes. but not today so we do have a, a very nice uh, booster set it's going to go on your future 44 inch eagle it's not mine it's, mm -hmm. it's Todd's uh, but I figured it'd be good to uh, display it I did it back bass backwards I started building the boosters and everything else and then we'll get the eagle yeah it's like you start with the doorknob and then you'll build the right. house build the house yeah absolutely so, Yep, it's he did a beautiful job of it. Um, now the uh, so the the freighter pod is a time slip creation uh, kit. Actually, it's the uh, pod is it's, it's about three different kits. Actually, it's um, this is Richard have, too. Also, isn't it? No, uh, this is all time slip. So oh. th this is uh, the winch pod is uh, a separate kit. The um, the pallet separate kit. And then uh, what Bim ended up doing was, uh, well, I took a little bit of leftover uh, Lee Malone aluminum that he used uh, for the Rogues and used, uh, used those for the thrusters. And then Bim uh, made a brass frame for, for this for me uh, so it would be durable enough for me to uh, take it from one show to another. Uh, so as you can see, it's um, pretty well rock solid now. Uh, and I think it displays pretty well. Um, the way the way Bim ended up uh, engineering the way it sets on the eagle. Um, what else? Um, 
and that's that's pretty much it hey, about, about the uh, don't let don't leave me out i have part of my 44 h eagle <laughs> see this one contributed tonight yeah yeah see the rest of it's in two different places in two different states well you saw the uh, they saw the vip pod last yeah time. the vip pod i've still got i've got the winch pod that's on on uh the winch mechanism which is unpainted um but everything else is in two different places in two different states so yeah trying to get them fixed up and put together so soon todd will have 44. And the, and the handoff by the cameraman <laughs> so that's uh that's one of lee malone's prototypes um i ended up purchasing uh two of them uh to to see what we could do with them i want to sooner or later i will be like gordon hankin out of the uk and have my own rogue um a rescue pod but but not today i have a vip i have a um the uh, cargo winch and i have a standard transporter I've yet to have the other two eagles, but one of these days, but not today. One of these days. No, girls keep that. All right. So, uh, what do you guys think? Pretty cool. Mark Joseph says nice. By the way, if anybody wants this kit, you can contact me. It will come unfinished, but everything will be there. And, and you can see it's, it's a really nice kit. Um, so yeah, if anybody wanted a studio scale hawk, uh, Todd's the man to uh, hit up. Um, it, they're, they're, I think they're still being produced by Time Slip, right? And fantastic work. As a matter of fact, they're rotocast now. now. That one there is a solid. Yeah, one. this one's a lot heavier than the ones we have now. This one's the solid one. The the new ones are rotocast and very lightweight. And you can get aluminum from them for them from Mike Reader. Yep. Mike does a fantastic job on the uh, on the studio scale um, aluminum for for that kit. Just just don't expect it to be uh, delivered to you tomorrow. Right. I believe I have one in stock. If anybody's interested. A one kit. One kit. Oh, gotcha. I was thinking about. Thanks to George. A time slip. Yeah. Can I buy it? No. I'll let I'll let your fans buy it. Bim. To answer your question, Gordon left them in a box back home. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in a little late. I apologize. Hold on. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Sorry. I can't believe that. So I, you know, purchasing a new house, downsizing. A lot of stuff is still in storage, so I, I grabbed what I could to re what I remembered. I, I forgot that that uh, the uh, the thrusters were separate because I remembered uh, the other one being all together. So um, I apologize, Ben. My bad. Next time it'll look good. Uh, still looking for some baffles, though. What's so, the cost on the Hawk? The Vernon asked. Uh, the kit's uh, eight hundred dollars. It's not a cheap kit to produce, believe me. So. Um, really good price. Yeah. Really good price. Yeah. It's, um, and if you you can build, that's the one to build right now. It's a very nice kit. I'm honored to have two of them. So. Yeah, I don't even have one yet. Every time I get kids. ones, yeah, the, well, kids. I got two that are going out the door. But every time I get a kit, somebody says I want to buy it, so I have to send it out. And I'm like, George, can you make me another one? And then you know it gets forever ending. So, just to recap too, we uh, visited Mr. Jamie Hood at round two today. I'll be doing some videos and, and pictures of that tomorrow and a little tour. That was a fantastic video. tour. Absolutely loved it. Pretty cool. Shared, shared a couple of posts from Tom Eilerman of Nebula Shipyards, uh, but um, yeah, more, more uh, of that little tour. That, that was basically the surprise. I wanted to at least make sure that we can show off, uh, show to him the hawk uh, uh, of what, what the uh, studio scale looks like. He's held it once, but I, I don't think that he, he fully appreciated it as, as he's doing a little research on it now. So hopefully we, we'll see some, some good news coming from round two very soon. Yeah, we did put him in a corner and tell him hawk, yeah. 148. 148 scale, that's or right. Or else. That's right. 
So, uh, and I know that a lot of you fans out there have been really talking about it. So, um, yeah. But anyway, we also wanted to put together uh, a bit of a comparison on the stun gun and Conlock. Which you'll see tomorrow. Yeah, so I, I shot Sometime. the... Uh, Not shot early. I'm sleeping in tomorrow. <laughs> I shot vacation. The, I shot the... You done? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I shot the, uh, shot the pictures comparing uh, the, the Roland Cor Cormier. Hopefully I pronounced that properly. Margucci, I mean story of my life so you, you can hopefully uh, sympathize and empathize um, also um, uh, with regards to your comlock and stun gun for comparison I wanted uh, Jamie to actually hold uh, and, and see for himself the differences between uh, realistic versus accurate uh, and hopefully with this kit we'll be able to combine them both right to where the, the kit is available, I know it's probably going to be split in two. You'll have a seam to, to deal with on the kit itself for, for the, from the stun gun, but you can obviously take care of the seam yourself. We've been doing it for years on the command module, right, on, on the uh, little kits. But the bottom line is, is that now you'll have buttons to, to program, perhaps add a little bit of electronics, put lights in it and stuff like that. So it's going to be a really, really sweet kit. It, it's also going to come with a little cap for the top so it, you'll have all three variations which is really cool I, I know he said that already during his little video uh with with the other uh it was inter interstellar or no it was um, starship modeler or it was, it was one, one of amazing those amazing modelers scale yeah. modelers amazing scale. Okay. jeff asked uh how about the 148 swift uh it'll be down the road i'm sure it's really it hasn't been too much talk about the uh anything past the hawk at the moment uh, would love to see an Ultra Probe, would love to see a Meta Probe, would love to see a, a Swift. Not a Super Swift, I really don't care for that one, but I think a Swift will set, would sell yeah. pretty well. Everything Jamie says, anything is possible, everything's on the table, we just have to show sales. Yeah, that's the bottom line is, uh, <clears throat> you know, from a business perspective, you, you have to uh, make money and that's what they're in the business for. Now, granted, they've produced 20 plus products since 2013. Seven uh, years. I started near seven kits a year. For, well, I mean, one kit a year. One one kit a year, something yeah. like that. But sorry, my but, You know, you have your you have your pre builds. You have your your uh, you know all the different things that they produced for 1999. We've been so blessed with with everything, and then now we have you know uh, uh, a uh, stun gun and a comlock coming out next year, and hopefully another kit. Hint hint. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens, but they're still making money and they're still being able to produce some stuff. So we are still being blessed. We are supporting them. Right. So um, we, well, got we want to help them out as best we can. So uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Maybe, maybe the Swift could be a, a good seller. Well, the one thing that we saw, of course, I'm a big Trek fan, is they had the uh, pre-built Enterprise TOS-1350. I'll be doing that stuff tomorrow, too. Yeah. And uh, so there's the Trekkies, Star, uh, Star Trek props and ships. If you're not a member, go there because you'll see some round two Trek tomorrow. Or Nebula shipyards are yep. not generic, but anything sci fi ship related in Irwin Allen. Our sister group, Nebula Shipyards, for everything sci fi. Yeah, that Enterprise was amazing. Yes. Uh, I'm not much of a Trekkie myself, but I'm probably going to buy one of those myself. And didn't Jamie those said it's about a $500 price point, so it's not a bad price. No, nah, not, not for it being put not together, bad. big monster, you know, already colored and everything. Yeah. Beautiful. It's, it's um, beautiful. I think he said February-ish. Yeah. So thank, thank you, COVID. Yeah, I did a real good flyby video of it when I was there. It's on Shipyards now, but Tata posted also, just like we did during the live feed here. So you get to see some real good close-up detail on it. So, you want me to show the truck base I bought, brought? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's pull that up. I'll hand the phone off to Mr. Todd. <clears throat> now. Oh. Right now, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> switch around and talk to everybody. <laughs> hey, guys, what's happening? They're opening the box right now. So, I hope you guys are... Uh, <clears throat> hope you guys are enjoying the videos we've been doing but here we go we're going back to tom live so hang on hey everybody how you doing out there 
Uh, Simon Birch did an unboxing about a week or so ago of this, so I'm going to do this much quicker so that it doesn't bore you. When I send these kits out, I've got a, a detailed, it's not really instruction, it's more a packing slip, but it does tell some things that you may want to watch for. I've got quite a bit of detail in that. Just like the TOS boxes and the Eagle's Nest, we're using foam systems where I have actually made cutouts. And here's all your stainless steel hardware. I've labeled each pack of what the part numbers are. I've even included the special uh, no tamper star bit to put your screws in. Uh, little rubber feet that go underneath the base when you're done. We added, actually Simon, not Simon, but uh, Stuart Foley was looking at this and he goes, man, you need to cover the entire top of stainless. So we added one extra piece and that's why it's in an envelope because I had all the foam work done prior to this piece being added about two weeks ago. So as I said, each piece of stainless has its own pocket so it doesn't go anywhere. And if any of you know anything about laser cutting, the stainless that has this plastic on top of it is the actual brush side that the customer would see when it's finished. So we leave that on until you're done with your final build. The back side's the back of the sheet. Of course, you'll see scratches and stuff from handling the parts in the shop as they're being cut. And just so you can see what that stainless looks like, I made some gifts for my office personnel, myself included, for Christmas stainless Sweet. steel. Sweet! Where's mine? You and Gooch are going to get one for your desks, but I will actually do custom name plates like this. They'll be probably about $79, and you can have your own name put on it um, if you want to buy things for your office. Great little doodad, but that's what this stainless looks like underneath. I'll take the next layer off here, which exposes the actual base. We had a couple 3D printed bases done. One was done by Steve Burns and then I was looking at a company to buy a 3D printer so they did a, a two split print of the base. So then I sent the model after I glued it together down to Chris Lynch at uh, Ravenstar Studios and he cleaned the model up, made the molds and you can see how heavy the inside of this thing is. I designed this around the electronics for tenant controls. So like the mega board goes there, the phaser board, and the TOS board goes in there. And it is set up that it also comes with the speakers. So you get two speakers, Genco speakers, which fit into the slot. So you've got two speakers, so you can run your phasers through one, you can run your music through the other. Um, Very nice. And just to show you how all the stainless will fit, the stainless, plates go on. Grab a couple more here. Just I'm going to turn them upside down so that you see what it looked like with stainless on. Now I had this idea if somebody buys a base and they don't want to have buttons or lights, I've given an extra blank. So you get two of these in it so then you could actually just put two blanks on either side and that little wedge I showed you in the envelope goes here so the entire surface would then be covered with a stainless cap. If you raise these up with say like an, an o-ring or a standoff and then put some led lights you can get some really cool backlighting action going underneath the stainless i think that would look really cool um, we've molded the a center nub about an eighth inch deep here so that you can know where you can place your your post i did not put a post in the kit because the tos has a very small post uh, if you're doing a refit or something we're using a mega board you've got a 3 8 band of wire that you got to pump through it so we leave the choice of the pole up to the builder. You know, maybe we should do an Alpha Moonbase crest. I think we could do that. And then your bottom, the bottom layer in here is the backing plate, the stainless backing plate. That after you get it all done, you'll have a, a plate to go on like this, and then the then the four rubber feet will go in the corner and then you screw that down so that you'll be able to set that on the table and not scratch the surface. Wow, in. very nice. So these are gonna retail for $179. We've actually sold five of them the first week they were out. I had 20 of them cast, so okay. uh, there's 15 left in my house. Mm -hmm. I chose to cast them in white. It was kind of a command decision. I didn't have a chance to talk to Simon before I placed the order, but we are gonna cast the next batch in black, but I figured the average model builder might want to paint his whatever color. So I mm -hmm. thought if I went white, it might give them the ability to paint different colors easily. 
Right. But Simon said, don't worry about that. He's just cast them in black. So the next run of 20 will be done in black. So okay. that, in a nutshell, is the, uh, the base that we had actually at Wonderfest, the print, uh, when we had the last Wonderfest, and we got a pretty decent response from it from the passerbys. So if you have any questions, you can uh, get a hold of us through Nebula Shipyards. Okay. And uh, Tom at Ridge Tech Solutions is my engineering business. Well, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Eagle's Nest. I propped it up real, real quick, right there. And this this is the kind of the original bread and butter. Yeah, this was what we did back in ooh, 2018. 18, I, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I was actually I was contracted to build one for an enterprise, and I had the chance to be at Mike Reader's booth, and I really thought, you know, if I go to the Wonderfest, I really need to bring an Eagle box and not a TOS box. So I hurried up and came up with this design. But we've shown in some of the other videos, they were we knew they were coming out with a lab pod, so I made this thing to fit either a regular passenger pod. You take all these inserts out here, you can uh, facilitate for the lab pod. If you have a cargo pod, you put uh, take one of these out and it lowers it a half inch so that it, it sets up for any one of the Eagles. And we've got, when Todd and I did the first roll test, my Eagle had about four ounces of lead in the nose and my CM snapped here. So that is why we added this baffle up here to support the, the CM and the engine bells in the back here that oh. way so i'm a testament to this this eagle's nest just to let you know i've used this thing five different times with five different round two mpc 22 inch kits not a one broke it was sheer delight to to finally find uh, a shipping container that can take care of these eagles when whenever they get done because i don't i can't tell you how many times that my eagles have broken or messed packages mm -hmm. up or whatever. Shipping from the uh, builder is essential. Yeah. These, these are perfect for the you builders out there that are gonna build on commission. Yeah. You can send it to the person and have them send it right back to you so it's reusable. Yep, I love it. One thing that we had a lesson learned and it was really not anything wrong with the box we had uh, some builders that were painting all their sub-assemblies and then they were gluing paint to paint surfaces so when you have shock waves of something being dropped i've never had that problem yeah i mean whatever whatever builds i mean this one came from uh well this eagle uh, came from uh, spain but uh i've i've had stuff mailed all over the country here and not a problem that was, that well, was you won't this that was a serious drop test we yeah, threw we it and threw rolled it, it down <laughs> and, uh, from the top floor of his barn then down the stairs of the basement worse than crazy. worse than the beginning of ace ventura right, oh, right. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. all right guys well i appreciate that uh all right do we want to so, wrap this up yeah we're, we're gonna wrap this up leave your comments i'll try and go through them over the next few days since i'm on vacation and uh answer them and uh Thanks for being with us. Merry, um, Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas, yeah. everybody. Merry Christmas. And, and Happy New Year. Enjoy your downtime, please. Yeah, okay. and please stay safe. Stay safe. Wear your mask when needed. Yep. All right, everybody. Props and ships out. All right, man. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.